Hi, welcome to the latest episode of NAMI New York State Perspectives. I'm your host, Matthew Shapiro. We are so excited to be back and, and doing these perspective episodes as we prepare for Mental Health Awareness Month this May. And I'm thrilled to be joined by my two colleagues, Amanda McDowell and, and Cassandra Ferugia. Hi, how's, how are you both doing today? Great, hey. glad to be here. And we're really excited to share our jam-packed calendar for Mental Health Awareness Month. Yeah. Well, and I can tell you firsthand, I've watched how hard Amanda and Cass have worked, uh, you know, leading up from since really the beginning of the year to make sure that this Mental Health Awareness Month is really as impactful as can be. And we're doing offering so many different things and different ways that our viewers and our members can get involved. And of course, traditionally, one of the biggest ways that uh, we've gotten the community involved in, in raising mental health awareness, and I love the fact that a lot of the messaging around this year is really that, that about togetherness and, you know, they're really through together and, and, and working as a community, can we create a community fostered in mental wellness? And one of the ways that we've traditionally done that is our, our ribbon awareness campaign. So can you uh, discuss that a little bit? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. Um, this is my first year working on our ribbon campaign. It's been uh, really fun uh, just working, uh, making these ribbons and visiting local businesses and organizations. I've got one here. This is what it looks like. Um, and so we take them around to local organizations uh, and ask them to partner with us by posting them. Um, with our name and our contact info, just as a way to kind of raise mental health awareness and to provide a resource for folks uh, if they're looking for that kind of support. And, you know, one of the things too, Cass, I know it was really cool. I got to spend an afternoon with you in the uh, Lark Street neighborhood here in Albany talking to businesses and, and, and about these things. And, you know, I, I think the reaction that you got gotten from businesses have been a little different this year. And I think people really want to engage in, in awareness and are really in tune to the importance of mental health. Can, can you talk about the response that we've been getting? Yeah, everyone has been so supportive of our mission and, you know, really just enthusiastic about hanging them. Me and Amanda have been going out and, you know, we're like, oh, we'll hang them for you. And immediately they hang them up and we take a picture and it, it, we've just been really well received, which is really great. And, you know, the ribbon campaign continues to be such a critical initiative for us as we're, you know, continuing to, to combat all the, the impacts of COVID. And as we continue to fight against the stigma surrounding mental illness, especially for communities who continue to struggle to find and seek, you know, community support and mental health support. And um, who, if, if someone watches this and they want to put up a ribbon, what type of places put up ribbons? Uh, where, where's the campaign? What kind of- Sure. So, think? you know, we're really hoping that this campaign can reach everyone as, you know, collaboratively, like our, our collective mental health has been impacted so much. So we're looking for not just businesses, but schools, organizations, parks, um, municipalities, everywhere can get involved. Libraries can hang up these ribbons, you know, and just seeing that ribbon, seeing that this place supports mental health, seeing the information on there and people being able to connect with us and support, it's just so meaningful. And really, like Amanda was saying, it's really just like a gateway key to recovery. So really, we hope everyone will participate. You can contact us directly at our office if you're looking to, for us to send you some ribbons. We're happy to do that. And please contact your local affiliate to get more involved as well. That's great. Thank you, Kathy. And what I love about this and what's so important is that it regulates the conversation about mental health issues and really puts them in non-traditional settings and puts it as a part of everyday life. And, and I, I think that's so important. And the other thing that I, that you both have been working so hard on is showing that you know you can't have physical health without mental health, and that you know our mental wellness is so important to our overall wellness. And, and one of the ways we're just, uh, demonstrating this is our second second annual uh, Wellness Wednesday series that we're going to be hosting throughout the month. So uh, I'm really excited about these. I think we have four topics that are so timely and and so important and um, the first one on May 4th is going to be on uh, mental health in schools. Do you want to talk about that a little bit and about the series? 
Yeah. So again, just like Matt was saying, this is our second year doing this. We're really excited and proud that we can put on this series again. You know, so many people enjoyed it. We got such a great feedback last year. So it will be every Wednesday of the month of May at 4 p.m. on Zoom. As Matt mentioned, the first one is mental health in schools, where we'll be We'll, we'll be joined with representatives from the Office of Mental Health, SUNY, the Gilderland School District, and a young adult leader who's going to share their story, and everyone's going to share their efforts in promoting mental health in schools. And um, Amanda can tell us about the next one, which is on Talk Saves Lives. Sure. Um, so on the 11th, we are going to have a um, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention come and talk to us, one of their very passionate advocates. They're going to do their Talk, Save Li Talk Saves Lives presentation. Um, and it covers the sort of things like warning signs, what you can do, resources, various statistics on suicide and making sure um, that you're able to recognize it and have the steps to cope with it, which is just such an important conversation to have. And we're um, really uh, pleased to be able to work with this organization for such a um, vital topic. And you know, having these conversations are so important. And obviously, I think people are sometimes reluctant to talk about their mental health as a whole. But certainly, once we start discussing suicide, it becomes an even more difficult conversation that people are reluctant to have. But it's so important that we do this. And, and one of the things that I love about the Wellness Wednesday series, as Cass said, you know, this is the second year we've done it that last year these conversations led to impactful change. You know, some of the issues that we discussed last year, including um, 988 and, and Children's Act teams, like really um, unique concepts, they all got adapted. So these conversations led to positive change, which I think is so important. And, uh, you know, I hope that that's the way it happens on suicide too where we can really change the way people talk about these issues. I know one of the things too, we wanna come out of this is uh, the the Atair Memorial Gardens and, and help spread those as well. So these conversations really do have such an impact on our communities around the state. So, so excited to engage on those as well and get back into having these conversations. And I think the next one that we're gonna be having on, on uh, May 17th is so important, um, it's May 18th, is so important and that's you know the peer-to-peer -peer perspective about setting smart goals can you explain what that is and why that's so important sure um so it's it was developed in our peer-to-peer -peer classes but really this is applicable to anyone whether you have a mental illness or you know someone with a mental illness or not this is a specific way of setting goals um that's that there's that they're measurable they're actionable, they are relevant, and they're, it's, they're time sensitive. So there's a specific goal. Rather than just thinking to yourself, oh, generally, I would like to do this, it breaks it down into steps. Um, and I think that's just a fantastic way to go about things. And I think anyone can really benefit from it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, many of us, some of us are familiar with SMART goals when it comes to thinking about goals and career goals, right? But this one is really thinking about how can we use SMART goals to help promote our mental wellness? Like what are we setting for ourselves in that way? And how are we looking to the future and how are we working on things for coping and things like that? So I think this will be a really great workshop and we're really excited to, to you know, share this with everyone. Yeah, I just love that concept. You know, I remember when I was younger and I was really struggling with my mental health, my, my grandfather said to me, uh, you know, that sometimes even the longest journey starts with the smallest step. And that's something that I've really uh, held with me throughout my life. And when I've struggled is that sometimes that first step is also the hardest step, no matter how small it can be. But I think having those incremental goals and not just looking at the end goal, but how we get there is so important. And I think this could create such a beneficial roadmap for people. And, and uh, it's just fantastic. Um, the other one now, I, I love the final concept too that we're going to be talking about on May 25th, which I think is so important. I mean, we discussed the importance of, of wellness and, and our mental wellness to overall wellness, but the last one we're going to be having is really about rethinking wellness and, and the concept of surviving versus thriving. Can you talk about that? 
Sure. So for that one, we will be joined by leaders in health and in wellness who will be sharing their interpretations of models of wellness. And, you know, when we were working on coordinating this, we did some research on different dimensions of wellness. I found six, Amanda found eight. So I think it's just going to be really great and interesting to see all the different models, right? Thinking about wellness, not just about our physical health, but our mental, our emotional, and all these other dimensions and how we can use that as a part of wellness and recovery. So um, the other part of it, we'll be discussing some of the barriers to accessing care, um, especially preventative care, and just the importance of preventative care in general, which, you know, we don't always think about, right, just getting those checkups and how we can regulate ourselves in different ways. So just bringing all these things together, looking at the person as a whole. And kind of checking in on yourself, too. Uh, that's something I've learned in my recovery journey, that sometimes, you know, uh, uh, I need to check in myself, how am I doing? Why am I struggling right now? And I think we've all been for the last couple of years surviving, right? We've all kind of been in survival mode and now it's time to thrive. And I, I think uh, it's such a good time for that transition. And I'm so glad we're a part of that discussion. So thank you both for all the hard work that you've put into this really critical, critical conversation. Um, you know, at the beginning when we were talking about the ribbon campaign too, we were talking about the importance of normalizing the conversations around mental health. And, and a big part of that is having it in, you know, everyday places, you know, having a part of everyday life. And uh, we're so excited this year, we're gonna be introducing our, our first annual Mental Health Awareness Day in Washington Park in Albany. The, the past couple of years for Mental Health Awareness Month, we've had uh, the car parade, which has been a fantastic thing and, and really, seeing the way people have reacted to it so positively, but now we're really taking it to the next level and, and going into one of the most public spaces in Albany, the heart of Washington Park and, and having this day. And it, there was so many great things going on. So can you, can you talk about the, the Mental Health Awareness Day? Yeah, and you know, just going back to what you were saying with the car parade, you know, that was something that we kind of put together on the fly as, at the beginning of the pandemic. And it was such a great way to bring people together, but social distance. So, you know, this year we're just really excited to get into the park to do something in person, but that's outdoors to help people feel more comfortable getting together and bringing the community together. So we're really excited about that. So this event, as Matt mentioned, is Mental Health Awareness Day. It is on May 21st, which is a Saturday. Like I said, it's outside. And um, we're really excited about everything that we're putting together for it. Amanda, do you want to tell them a little bit more about what the day will look like? Absolutely. It takes place, as uh, Matthew mentioned, in Washington Park, in the Lake House area. Um, it's from 10.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and we've got all sorts of activities. It's free, it's family friendly. Um, there's games, there's prizes, there's activities for children of all ages. There's gonna be music, food trucks, um, so much more, uh, including really just fun things. There's going to be a giant bubble artist. There's going to be chair massages, therapy dogs, just all kinds of um, really great things, you know, for, for parents or for anyone that are looking to, you know, get the kids outside, do something that doesn't cost a ton of money. Um, and then also along with that, we're having an awareness march um, around the lake uh, by the Washington Lake House. Um, and we're really excited to be partnering with uh, 15 local organizations um, that are going to have information tables to talk about their services and supports, um, which is fantastic because going back to what we've been talking about with wellness, how it's holistic, um, it's important to have access to all kinds of services. So to know what's out there in the community, to know what kind of resources there are, whether it's, you know, financial resources or, you know, social services um, or, you know, addressing food insecurity, any of those kinds of things also tie into our mental health. So being able to partner with these organizations. Um, we're really excited to do it, to make connections and to hopefully uh, bring people in while having a really good time. Yeah, and just thinking about that, right? Bringing everyone in as a community, building up that sense of community and really creating a, a safe space for people to engage and talk about mental health because you know that's the best way to raise it, to talk about it, to normalize it, 
to see who it impacts, to bring people together and show that we're a community that cares. I love that. We are a community that cares and cares about each other too. And, and we, you know, that's really the heart of NAMI, right? When there aren't enough services and supports to come around, it, it comes, it, you know, it's up to us to support each other and really create a community that's, like I say, based in caring and wellness. And, and this is you know, such a large way to, uh, you know, establishing that goal. And I, I love the fact too, that it's across ages that we have so many things for kids that will help their mental health and mental wellness without them even realizing it. it's not like it's a you know anything overly therapeutic or anything like that or traditionally therapeutic but you know again we talk about especially i think during the past couple of years uh how little things can contribute to our mental health being you know spending a day in the park being outside you know those sort of things are so important Your games and just the, the sense of community you know We've been separated for so long and to be able to come back together and just support each other is such a wonderful thing. And it's going to yeah. be a great thing. I think about, you know, in the winter, we held our seasonal depression series and thinking about like the impact that has, you know, during that time, not getting enough light, not getting enough vitamin D. So being, bringing people together to combat the isolation so many people have been feeling and just getting people together and outside, I think it's just gonna be really great. Yeah, and again, that's gonna be May 21st at Washington Park in, in the boathouse, right in the center of, of the park. So it's just really a great opportunity for, for you and your family to come out, have a great time, get some resources and, and really learn how different ways we can enhance our mental wellness, which is really, so important for everyone, like you said, Cass, you know, our collective mental health has been so negatively impacted. And again, there are so many ways that you, our viewers can get involved in this. Um, we, we have, uh, like I said, the ribbon campaign that day in Albany, the Wellness Wednesday series, which is open to everybody. But we also have uh, a few community walks going on in, in May. Do you want to discuss those, Cassandra? Sure. So we have two NAMI walks going on. We, there's the Westchester Walk, which will be in Hartsdale, New York. And then we have the NAMI New York City Walk, which will be at the Chelsea Seaport in Manhattan. So you can visit those affiliates' websites. Also, please reach out to your local affiliate to see what they have going on and see how you can get involved. All of our Wellness Wednesdays and the event in Washington Park is on our website, NAMI NY org and uh, another perspective Matt's working on <laughs> is uh, talking about another series we have going on, which is on our Instagram live, which is Tuesday Talks with Anne, which discusses women, different topics in women's mental health. So that's a great one to look out for. That's on Tuesdays during May at 7 p.m. on our Instagram live. Our handle is NAMI underscore nys so follow us so you can learn a little bit more about that as well and i also just wanted to mention that we are doing a giving tuesday campaign all month long of may you can go onto our website and make a donation you know we really appreciate everyone appreciate everyone's generosity and knowing that your support really helps support our work and our mission to continue to provide free mental health services our programs, our advocacy, our educational classes and programs, and, you know, to continue putting on these great series and events to raise mental health awareness. Right. Thank you for mentioning that too, Cass, because like you said, everything that we're able to offer in the community is through the generosity of our supporters and, and you know, everything that people give to NAMI, we put right back into the community to do events like we're doing in, in, in the park and the wellness series and, and everything like that. And obviously, I think people are getting very excited. Our phones are ringing off the hook today. It must be all the excitement we're generating for Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, one other thing that we'll be doing another uh, episode on, but you know, to kind of expand the series, we are also going to be participating in uh, the Sound Mind Music Festival in New York City. It's the day before the walk. So again, another really public uh, venue to have these so important discussions. And, and again, Amanda and Cass, I can't thank you enough for really working so hard to not just, you know, introduce these discussions, but do them in such a creative way and, and really get so many different people involved. So, you know, again, is there anything you want to leave our viewers with before we wrap up? 
Um, I guess what I would just mention, right? So Mental Health Awareness Month is just one of our campaigns. In July, we have our Black Indigenous People of Color Mental Health Awareness Month. September is our Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. So keep looking out for our newsletters and checking out our website to learn more about how you can get involved. Right, because obviously it's so important that we don't limit the conversation about awareness and wellness to one month. And I know uh, Amanda's already working also on our Off the Mask event, which is another way uh, to communicate the importance of mental health in sort of a non-traditional way. And that's gonna be November 12th. And we'll put the information, we're still looking for models for that as well. And, and we're gonna be participating in a lot of the Pride activities too in June. And really, again, making ourselves a part of the overall community and showing the importance of, of mental health uh, to the, the wellness of the overall communities and the different sub communities that, that we work to support. And again, the two of you have just worked so hard on this and you know, I see it every day, you know, how hard you're working and, and we just can't thank you enough. And, and of course, the people that you touch can't thank you enough. You know, we, we, we tell all the guests here that it's the, the, the NAMI notion of hope starts with you and, and the two of you are doing it every day. And, and we're so excited for all these activities that you've been working so hard on and to get our, our community involved. So again, thank you both of you for all the hard work for, for joining me today. And, and uh, you'll get to see Cass and Amanda both you know, at our Wellness Wednesdays, meet them in person May 21st at the uh, uh, a Washington Park Day of Awareness. And again, if you have a business school, um, any type of communal organization that wants to hang a ribbon, we have the information for that too. And it does take a community. And um, so we thank our viewers as well for helping make May so impactful. And, and again, thank you both. Thank you, Matt. You're very welcome. And I just, before we signed off, I just wanted to expand slightly on our Off the Mask um, Gala, which is going to be happening in November. Um, when we speak about stigma, we're talking about symbolically taking off the masks that we wear every day, where, you know, we all pretend that we're fine, that we don't, that our mental illness is not affected, um, because stigma is such a big issue. So with our yearly gala, we have models, they rock, walk the runway wearing masquerade masks, and then they take them off. Um, it's a really fun event. Um, so we'll have more information coming up about that. Um, but and hopefully yeah, we'll have some future programs. episodes where we get to meet our models and, and have them tell a part of their story. We got to do that last year. And that's always my favorite part of that event is really talking about the models, talking to the models and why they're doing this and why they're offing their mask and telling their story. So a lot to look forward to. Again, that's gonna be November 12th. We'll put the application for that. We will be hearing more about that come the fall. And again, uh, thank you both and, and thank you for watching. and. Thank you for helping spread mental wellness in your community as well. Thank you. Bye.